Well, hello and welcome to the Intentional Life Podcast. My name is Courtney Asher. I'm Ben Cornick. And we're here at Christ Rock Community Church uh, bringing you another episode of the Intentional Life with the goal of talking about actually our Intentional Life Discipleship Pathway. Yep. So at our church, we have our Discipleship Pathway called the Intentional Life. That's what we invite everyone into who is trying to live the life of a disciple mm-hmm. in following after Jesus. And there's four components. Uh, we talked about them last episode. If you didn't get a chance to listen, go back and preview that so you get kind of the overview high-level concepts of what we're talking about and why those four elements have been really important to us yeah. in disciple-making. Um, but the first one is God time. And so today we are going to unpack God time. God time. God time. Yes, yeah. we should have a big loud <laughs> yeah, noise for that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, God time is really abiding. So this mm-hmm. is kind of the church word for it. But we we hear in John 15, 5, that we cannot do anything apart from Christ, that yes. he is the vine, we're the branches, and our job is actually to remain in him. And mm-hmm. so another translation of the word abide is to remain in him. Um, mm-hmm. And so I want us to think about that when we think about abiding. It shouldn't feel like work. It shouldn't feel like things we have to no. produce for God. It's just really um, a steadfastness of making sure that we're we have a spiritual discipline in our lives life and a commitment to be uh, rooted in time with the Lord. Well, and and I think, I think that's why it's important to the fact that uh, we've talked about in previous episodes, how Jesus like used stories and metaphors for everything. And so when he said, he didn't just say, Hey, remain in me. He, he, he didn't just say like, abide in me, remain Mm -hmm. in me. He said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Mm -hmm. So there's this, there's just such a clear idea of like, okay, that word picture gives me the idea of like something that's connected yeah. to the thing that gives it life. Like if I want fruit in my that's life, great. and you know, it's like a, a a thing of grapes that you buy at the grocery store can look really good for a few days, mm-hmm. but because it's not connected to a vine, sooner or later that thing's gonna dry up. It's so deceiving. They're never as good as they look. They're not, never. A couple days later, you're like, what? Yeah. Every once in a while, you get some super good grapes, yeah, but, but then it's like the good. next bag is just so it's disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, grocery stores, we're talking to you. Yeah, we're um, talking to you today. But but then it's like, but if you actually want to continue to produce fruit, you have to stay connected to the vine. Yep. So I just love that, that it's like this idea of like staying connected, remaining in him, abiding in him. All these ideas have the same concept of like, you just, you, you want to, that steadfast, mm-hmm. like I'm connected to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And if he's spirit, that means I'm connected to him anywhere right. I go, not just in a church building, not just in like a moment where I'm like a holy moment, but uh, we do think that set setting aside some time mm-hmm. to spend specifically with the Lord helps us to learn what abiding can look like in our life, right? For sure. For sure. And we recommend at least starting with 15 minutes. Absolutely. And so we're not saying, hey, forever, just make sure you get 15 minutes, you know, uh, on the books somewhere in your day. Mm-hmm. Of course, we want that to grow and we want you to feel like you're connected to God always, mm-hmm. really. But we want you to be intentional. And that's why we use the word intentional life. We want yep. you to be intentional about spending time with God and carving out kind of that sacred space between you and him where you are making sure that you're rooted in uh, what he's asking you to do and you're, you're rooted in your identity in Christ, Mm -hmm. it's really coming from that time. So important. Uh, So we see Jesus do this. We see Jesus actually remain in the Father, which Mm -hmm. is always a good indicator that we should do it. (laughs) We should probably do this too, yeah. But the crazy thing is, is I'm like, okay, Jesus is God, and here he is still modeling how to be more connected to God. Mm Mm-hmm. So I'm like, we're we're really missing the mark here if we're like, yeah, I just don't feel like I need to spend time with him. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, Jesus did that, and I get it. But, uh, you know, I, I think I've got this figured out. But it's just, it's like, they're like yeah. one and the same kind of, you know? I mean, they're That's what part I'm saying. Like, <laughs> if, if our mentality is like, well, I know Jesus did that, but I don't really need to do it. Yeah. It's like, well, Jesus didn't do it because he needed to do it. He was doing it to model to us. This is the life. And I've actually heard it said, uh, we like Jesus said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. Yeah. And so the Bible oh, tells yeah. us he's the perfect representation of God. Like if you want to know what's God like, all you have to do is look at Jesus. Hmm. But at the same time, he is fully God, but he's also what? Fully man. Yep. So what that means is if you want to know what it means to be human, the best person in all of human history to look at is Jesus. Mm-hmm. He shows you what humanity was meant to be. And so that idea of like the fact that he took time every single day to just be a, away from everybody else mm-hmm. and spend time with the Father tells us this really matters. I mean, these examples I'm thinking of in Mark, uh, Matthew, 
Mark 1 says, mm. rising very early in the morning while yep. it was still dark, yep. he departed and went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. I mm-hmm. mean, I know a lot of people that that's their rhythm. It's like, hey, first thing in the morning before anything happens. Um, you know, the scripture often says like, use the word daily and in abiding, it's daily mm-hmm. in um, the the uh, Lord's Prayer going, give us our daily bread. Sure. Yeah. Um, those kind of concepts are in there often. And so... I think it's for a reason. It's like he he's getting up in the morning before the day starts and giving his day to the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's a great rhythm. If that works for you, we really encourage you to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jesus went off and prayed, you know, first thing. Then you have in Matthew 14, he had been teaching. He had the crowds there, and he actually dismissed them. He went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. So he's yep. showing again. And, and this guy's in high demand, you know, <laughs> he's healing people. He's teaching the multitudes. Everybody's going, we got to get by this guy because something amazing is going on. Yeah. Uh, he's got the disciples who are basically living with him and they're constantly around him. And he's making sure that he has set apart time to be alone with the father. Well, and I think in a really, uh, just an important piece of that is to say like, so we say like, oh, well, he was preaching, you know? So it's like, that's like a big deal or whatever. So like we kind of, mm-hmm. sometimes we put preaching on like this mm-hmm. this pedestal. And I will say like, when I'm done preaching, I actually do go spend time with the Lord when I'm hmm. done. I'm like, that I need I need to be refilled with the, the Lord and yeah. with the Spirit. But, but it's like, well, what about at the end of your workday? What about if you just got done doing something that's really like exhausting and you really served and really gave a lot in that time? Like, wouldn't it be a great idea to say, like, hey, you know, it'd be really refreshing is to just go spend time, some time with the Lord, yeah. even if it's just a couple of minutes. Like, the whole 15 minutes a day, it's like, well, that could be five minutes at different intervals. But, you know, just this concept of this habit that he had to say, when I'm done pouring out for others, I'm now going to go yeah. be with the Father. Yeah, which like, is really great. Super cool. Yeah, so prayer is one of the things we want you to write down with God time, like just that um, piece of abiding where you're in communication with the Father. Mm-hmm. It's really important. Um, we also see that Jesus was in the Word. He knew the Word. I mean, he quoted the Old Testament tons of times, fulfilled all these prophecies. Um, of course, he knew the Word and he shared that with us. But he even shares in Matthew 4 uh, that it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so yeah. he's sharing, like, the authority of Scripture is really important um, what is God telling you? Cause that's where the authority is. And it's mm-hmm. like, I should, yeah, I should pay attention to that. You know, yep. I should be in the word. And so script, reading the scripture, getting in the word, yep. prayer, those are two huge, really, um, foundational things I would say for yep. abiding and yep. a place to start. If you're going, how do I get started? That's a place to start. Try just praying, try just talking to the father, setting some time aside or try opening yep. up the Bible being committed to getting in the Word. Well, and you can combine those. So if you're like, well, I don't really know what to pray, it's like, okay, well then, uh, how about today you're going to read Psalm 37? And Psalm 37 talks about how, like, uh, you know, if you delight yourself in the Lord, He's going to give you the desires of your heart. And don't fret, don't worry about what mm-hmm. all these evil people are doing, but wait upon the Lord, be patient and wait upon Him. Okay, well now, I- I've read all these things today, okay, well now pray them. Say, Lord, help me to really delight in you. Um, so that mm-hmm. I can understand that, uh, you know, what the desires of my heart need to be. You know, like you can mm-hmm. then pray those things. So scripture and prayer always work well together. Uh, but then, uh, so those are two things that we yep. can do in uh, our abiding time, our God time. But uh, then there's this idea of like solitude and silence. Yes, um, which you talk about that one. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I'm like, you're, just, you're just like, uh, mm, uh, cr- yeah, solitude, yeah, yeah. 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 Before we started the uh, episode, uh, you were just saying how you're like, there's constant noise in your yeah. life. Yeah, like, like you I, I got four kids and a dog, yeah. and if you knew my husband, it's, it ain't ever quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I would say I, I love solitude and silence. Um, it's one of the th- one of the main ways that I feel really connected to the Lord. Um, I you know I love going on like prayer retreats where hmm. I literally. Really, I'm just silent for hours, and uh, my wife is like, "That sounds Yikes. horrible." Yeah, I'm um, home with her. <laughs> but for me, it's really great. It's super refreshing. But I would say this: that uh, some people would say that's impractical for me. I can't just go off to some monastery and sit there and pray, and I, or I've got I don't have like a room at a church that I can. Well, okay. Here, here's a thing you could do. Uh, there might be a, even f- five minutes, five to fifteen minutes in your day where you're like, "I'm in my car by myself." Mm-hmm. And I, I always listen to a podcast. Maybe you're listening to the podcast yeah. right now in your car. Just shut it off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> shut it off right now. Listen to the um, – so – but I'm saying, like, uh, maybe it's in your car. Uh, maybe you have a morning walk. Uh, maybe you can say, I'm going to get up 15 minutes earlier. 
and uh, just go yeah. like, I'm going to try right. to beat my kids awake. And, and, and <laughs> yes. I, I don't know, like try to beat them to the punch, right? Like, uh, and I don't know what it is about kids, but I think they have the sixth sense yeah. that they know when you're trying to spend time with the Lord. <laughs> yeah, they find Because you. it's like, literally, I could wake up <clears throat> at four in the morning and just be like, all right, I'm going to go spend some time with God. And like all my kids will all sudden be up and be like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to go make some cereal. I'm like, what are you doing awake? <laughs> um and so, but that solitude and silence, I think the reason it's important is you think about the scriptures that say things like, be still and know that I am mm-hmm. God. Or when Moses said to the Israelites, be still, mm. uh, like the Lord will fight for you. All you need to do is be still. Uh, or in Isaiah, where it says, uh, in uh, repentance and rest is your salvation and quietness and trust is your mm. strength. Yeah. Or, or when Elijah went out to the to the mountain and God wasn't in the fire, the wind, or the earthquake, he was in the, the gentle whisper. Mm-hmm. So uh, sometimes part of our practice in our God time would be uh, the silence and solitude, uh, mostly for the sense of just going like, hey, I need to listen for God's voice. Yeah. Because sometimes yeah. we kind of get this idea that prayer is just like me, just like telling God what's on my heart and the things that I need him to do. And then I'm just like, all right, thanks, God. See ya. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it's like, well, no, prayer is a conversation. And a conversation has to be like, all right, here's the things I said. Now, God, what do you have to say about it? Yeah. And then you have to sit and listen. That's really um, good. So anyways, I just I think it's a powerful thing. And I know it's may, for some people, it's maybe not a natural muscle to flex. So ease yourself into it. Like mm-hmm. find pockets of time where you can just have silence and just see what that might do in your spirit as yeah. you abide in the Lord. Yeah. It's great too, given how like consumed our time is. Totally. I mean, to just even have that space to hear, because yeah. how often do you intentionally have that space to hear from God? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I mean, if you're running from something and you get some quiet time, you're going to hear right yeah. away. That's going to be loud and clear, like, whoa, all right, yeah. got to deal with that. So so do it. It's a good way to abide and good way to get your next steps. And, and that's actually a good point. I will say that um, you might have to fight through this. When you finally stop, if all your life is noise and movement, and then you finally stop and go, I'm just going to try to listen to the Lord, more than likely the first thing that's going to happen is all your anxieties are going to pop to the surface, Mm. all your worries, all the to-do list things that you feel like you need to do. So get it out. Just go, okay, like literally write out, here's the things I need Mm. to get done. Here's the things I'm worried about. Here's the things I'm anxious about. Because those will bobber up to the surface and then go, okay, now that I've got that out of my way, Lord, I just want to try to hear Mm. you. Um, so j- just as a warning, like, cause some people will try it and then be like, well, I failed. Yeah. And it's like, no, just realize that when you finally slow down, all of your anxieties are just going to like bobber to the surface. Yep. So. And if you try it four in the morning, your kids come, just think of it as an opportunity to disciple your kids. It's like, Hey, what was the first <laughs> thing go. they saw dad do in the morning was getting the word. He's that's not a bad thing, yeah, right? That's a good thing. Um, so then another discipline that we talk about here is fasting. And fasting yeah. is, you know, often when we think about fasting, we think Everyone's about... Everyone's most exciting <laughs> spiritual exercise, yeah, fasting. Yeah, we put on sackcloth and ashes. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then we fast. Yeah. Um, no, but often we think just abstaining from food. And we've mm-hmm. taught and talked about this here at the church that you can fast from anything. I mean, you can fast from Netflix and video games or you can... <laughs> that's not my crutch, but you can fast what, what from... What is your crutch? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, if I did... Well, to be fair, Law & Order SVU... Okay. I mean, I like I I you, you could binge have that. seen every one of those episodes, yeah. and there's a lot. Yeah. At some point, I was like, "How old is Olivia Benson?" And then I was like, "Wow, I've been well, watching this for way too version? long." Did you cross over into no. that, or you just stay in the American version? Yeah, okay. I'm all American. Yeah, all, yeah, you're an all American girl. <laughs> Not messing around with those Brits. Oh gosh. Um, but yeah, but, so take something that's kind of frivolous. You could say or though, superfluous. Like, I, you're like, hey, instead of watching Law and Order SVU, right. I'm gonna yep, spend yep. time with the Lord. Um or or going, okay, a food or something, you know, coffee, man, oof. If I want a tough fast, I give up coffee. Because yeah. I'm like, what am I doing in the morning? Getting coffee. Because then I can get through the rest of the day. I mean, I don't know about the rest of you, but that's like a, a staple. Totally. Brush my teeth and then get the coffee. So yeah. um, anyways, think about it that way. What's something that, you know, you're going to notice throughout your day you didn't have or you didn't do or it's mm-hmm. going to remind you. And so food is a good one because you fast from that and you get hungry and you're like, Wait, why am I doing this again? And every time you remember that, you start to feel like, oh, I I should be connecting with God in this moment. Like, this Mm -hmm. is a reminder. Um, I'm actually abstaining from something to fill myself with something else. 
Well, in that great passage you shared earlier where Jesus said, uh, we don't live on bread alone, but mm-hmm. on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, um, and, and I actually, I remember when I was a college student being like, why does fasting have to be one of these things? Like, this, this stinks. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> and, uh, and then I was like, actually, what's really cool is I get to deny my flesh during that time. So I get to deny like, you know, kind of this, this desire that I have for the things of this world, including food. Now it's like food evil. No, that's not what we're saying, but we're just going, that's a desire that you have. Yeah. That's a temporal desire. Yep. Um, and how, how much better to say, I'm going to give up food for just a time. And instead I'm going to fill myself with the word of God and with prayer. And, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you could listen to worship or whatever you're going to do. But the point being that now I'm feeding my soul. Yeah, and that's that's an eternal uh, dividend that I'm making. Um, so so to me, I'm going. That feels like so when I when I started to look at it that way, it's like oh, this is actually me being able to to, to deny the flesh, whether it's watching hmm. a show, mm-hmm. not eating food, not drinking coffee, um, and so that I can fill myself with something from the Lord, um, and that's an internal that's a, an eternal investment. That kind of helped me to go like, Mm, actually, fasting really matters. It really matters. And I mean, disciple making movements, it's like foundational prayer and fasting, those two together. And and that's where, honestly, we're failing in America because we try and take our leadership strategy and our tactics to try and, you know, organize people around the spirit of God. And we forget to actually get on our knees and ask him for what we need. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I just had the realization this week. So we've learned a lot from Shadonke Johnson out in Sierra Leone. And he often comes to North America to teach in the conferences and things Mm -hmm. like that about disciple making movements. But uh, man, the, the country has changed because he and others, in, you know, in particular, got committed to discipleship and making disciples. And it's so synonymous that you're not a Christian without being a disciple maker. They don't understand being a cultural Christian or just attending church, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, if I am a Christ follower, I am a disciple maker. Those are yep. That's the same thing. Totally. <laughs> but they have 10,000 people committed. Now, everybody prays and fasts. Everybody does it. I mean, they do a week a year, um, a first day of every month, whatever. They have spiritual disciplines like that built into their rhythms. Mm-hmm. But they have 10,000 people who are committed to being intercessory prayer warriors over disciple making across the world. Mm-hmm. So this guy's got people covering, you know, this conference that we're at. And, and I just got to thinking, man, um, I wonder if we're even here today, like our church, talking about disciple making, having the Intentional Life podcast, making disciples, because 15 years ago, those guys got on their knees and started praying for disciple making movements. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I mean, that is how powerful it is. And so... If you as a disciple can spend time with God praying and fasting and asking for his work to be done in and through your life and in this world, you're going to see huge things happen. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to... I mean, even Jesus said... Now, he was talking about casting out demons, but he said uh, some of these only come out with prayer and fasting. Yeah. And so... Uh, but I'm telling you, study Christian history. You will never see a an effective disciple-making movement uh, where churches are being planted and mm-hmm. disciples are being raised up and uh, people are going to unreached people groups. That never happens without people who are praying and fasting yeah. consistently. Yeah. I mean, I ju- I'm just telling you, look through Christian history. You will not find an example where prayer and fasting is not part of that yeah. movement. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. It's so huge. yeah, we definitely invite you into that and to, and to take it in, you know, baby steps, but grow into it. You know, mm-hmm. we can grow into all these. Um, the last one that we really teach on is worship mm-hmm. <clears throat> as part of abiding. Um, this is one I particularly love. I'm a worship leader, so I'm a worshiper at heart. But totally. Um, I mean, for me, just driving and cranking out worship tunes. I don't know if you ever seen me, but sometimes I'm in the parking lot just like, hoorah, rah, before I come in because I got to finish my song. Yeah, I, ha- um. I haven't. <laughs> um, but the other day I, I was listening to worship and like a really good song was on. And I just like, I mean, I didn't close my eyes. I was still driving, but I was just like, <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. And I had my hand up. And there was like a person next to me, and I think I had a moment where I was like, I think this person's staring at me. I said, I don't care. I just kept, I just kept worshiping. It, it's definitely happened. And I'm like, like, yeah, but, sorry, hey. Yeah, whatever. But it's like, hey. Having like, a good time here. Totally. Um, but there, there's something that, that changes in our spirit, too, when we turn our attention to God. It's, you know, we were created to worship God. Yep. We were created for that purpose. And so... If we have a relationship with him, we're going to worship him in, you know, unique ways that we were designed to do. Mm-hmm. I heard it said before, it's like every individual uh, Christ follower, it was made to worship God in their own way, right? In their own design. Mm-hmm. And if there's actually part of God's glory or worship that is um, taken away from him when we don't turn our attention to him. Mm-hmm. Because we're uniquely, you know, made in his image to bring mm-hmm. him that that praise and glory. 
Yeah. Uh, so anyways, worship is really powerful. And that can look like sitting and listening to worship songs. You know, if you're a musician or whatever, get out there and play something or spend some time, um, you know, singing along and, um, and and making, you know, intentionally uh, focusing on the words and, and the kind mm-hmm. of things that you're hearing because it will change your attitude, you know, your heart posture yep. for the day. And that's really all these principles in abiding really help do that. Well, not only that, I was recently reading something where the author said that... Um, like some people don't like to sing. They're like, you know, I get the whole worship thing. And, and when we say mm. worship, it doesn't just mean singing. Like yes. Worship is yes, bigger yes. than that. But what's super crazy is uh, she said, uh, but uh, singing is the most natural thing we can do as humans. Hmm. And if you think about it, like why, why wouldn't God create a creation that would sing to him? And uh, she said, because uh, what's more natural to us than rhythm? Because our heart beats in a rhythm hmm. constantly. Uh, without us trying to make it do that. It mm-hmm. just does it naturally. Mm-hmm. And she said, and we breathe. So she's like, what's more natural than rhythm and breath? And she's like, that's what music is. Interesting. You, you sing, uh, you, it's breath and rhythm. That's all it is. And so she's like, you don't have to sound good. But she's like, but and, and then like if you actually look <laughs> into the science of the physiological benefits of like people singing either by themselves or together, like it does something to you physiologically hmm. that's healthy. Um, so anyway, it's just a cool thing that I learned recently yeah. that I was like, Yes, like this is like because some people are like, why do we do this thing where we get together and all sing songs? Isn't this kind of weird? <laughs> it's like it is a little bit weird, but it's actually one of the most natural things we could yeah. do. Yeah. And in heaven, we're all going to be worshiping together. Right. Talks um, about that. Yeah. So, so we better just get good at it now. Yeah. So why not? Let, let's <laughs> let's get good at it. So. Yep. Yeah. So those are some practices uh, that we'd encourage you to look into. You know, reading mm-hmm. the word, prayer, silent solitude, fasting, worship. Um, and I love that you mentioned worship isn't just music, but outside of that, how can I turn my attention towards the Lord? Totally. And we ask you to start with 15 minutes in God time and living the intentional life, but grow into that, grow into what it means to be um, a rooted disciple, disciplined in abiding with the Father, because your fruit is going to come from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, you know, we just want to ask you to encourage uh, those around you to step into this space and and start small. Start with something, because you know, if it does become something where we're working for it, or we're kind of we're counting the clock and we're going, man, fifteen minutes. That's what you know. Start the timer. Start the timer. Yeah, yeah. and it becomes something. All right, something... Holy Spirit, you got fifteen minutes. Go. <laughs> it becomes yeah. a chore. You know, yeah. we're kind of missing the point. God delights in us, and He wants to spend that time with us. Mm-hmm. So make it something that's that's fun, you know, do your version of abiding. If it's driving and listening to worship, great. If it's getting in the Word, great. Um, mm-hmm. Mix it up, stretch yourself, grow yourself, but start with, you know, what you feel like is going to help you spend that time with God and have it be a heartfelt, delightful experience. Yeah. And and so with that, you know, so we, we don't want you to have the uh, check-in, check-out mentality, I'm just going to check the box mm-hmm. kind of thing. But at the same time, for some of you, you might be listening or maybe you have someone in a group that you're uh, part of that is just really struggling to even start. Uh, Or maybe that's you. Maybe you're saying, I don't even know how to get this going in my life. Uh, The question we'd want to ask you then is like, well, what obstacle is stopping you from entering into God time every day? Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, you know, is it because you're you're too, uh, you know, doing too much media in your life? Like, mm-hmm. uh, maybe it's just social media. Maybe you're watching too much Law and Order. Uh, for me, it'd be The West Wing. Um, <laughs> All but right. you know, so it's like, but are you watching something where it's like actually, you know, because I, sometimes I've heard people say like, 15 minutes feels like a lot for me. And I'm like, well, does it feel like a lot when you're watching a YouTube video and you're like, well, this is like 17 minutes long. Uh, Whatever. I've got time. Two hours of reels went by. Yeah. And and then it's like two hours later, you're like, wait a (laughs) second. What happened? It's like, look, we've got the time. We just don't spend it very well. Yep. Um, So so we're not trying to shame anybody. We're just saying, do some evaluation of your own life and say, what obstacles are getting in the way of me spending time with God? So it could be like a time management thing or like what you're spending your time doing. It could be like shame. Like you're just like, I just don't think God wants to spend time with me. Mm. He does. He, mm-hmm. He's wild about you. He wants to spend time with you. Uh, so think about what's holding you back. Maybe share it. If you're in a discipleship group, share it with somebody in your group. If you're not, share it with somebody in your life and say, hey, help me. Pray for me. Hold me accountable. And uh, But we, we promise you this, that you will never regret spending good time with the Lord and mm-hmm. abiding with him because you will see the fruit and the benefit from being connected to the vine. Amen to that. Well, thanks for hanging out with us on the Intentional Life podcast. Next week, we're going to be talking about gather time, which is the second step of the intentional life. And we hope you'll join us. Yeah, see you then. Mm-hmm.